Hello, my name is Bill Cooper, your host for Toro's Operator Safety Training Program for the Toro Sand Pro and Infield Pro models 5040 and 3040. Although they're somewhat similar, we'll be pointing out any differences. As you know, with new products, it's important to read the operator's manual. The operator's manual for both the Sand Pro and Infield Pro is located here behind the seat. It contains important safety, operation, and maintenance information. This program shouldn't be a substitute for a thorough reading of the operator's manual. When operating the Sand Pro or Infield Pro, it's important to wear substantial leather shoes or work boots. Avoid any loose-fitting clothing or jewelry that could get caught in moving parts. Hard hats, safety glasses, and hearing protection are always a good idea and may be required. So make sure you check your local ordinances, insurance, and regulations. Controls for both the Infield Pro and Sand Pro are the same. However, there are a few differences between the 5040 and 3040 models that will be pointed out in this section. The seat on both the Infield Pro and Sand Pro is adjustable for the operator's comfort. Pull this lever back to move the seat forward or back for the most comfortable position. On the right of the operator's platform is the traction pedal. It has three functions push down on the pedal to move forward. Press down here to go in reverse. And take your foot off the traction pedal to stop or go to the neutral position. At maximum RPM, your ground speed is proportionate to how far down you push the traction pedal. Here on the control tower, you have the throttle. Have it in the middle or halfway open when starting the engine and always operate at full throttle. Push the throttle all the way down or to idle position when shutting down the engine. Here on the other side of the steering tower is the choke. For a cold engine or the first start of the day, push the choke fully closed. After the engine starts, position the choke lever open until the engine runs smoothly. Starting a warm engine should require little or no choke. Next is the three position key switch. Rotate the key clockwise to the start position. Allow the key to automatically release to the run position when the engine starts. Rotate the key counterclockwise to turn the engine off. Here on your right is the lift lever to raise and lower the rear attachments. The 5040 model has a front lift and lower lever and remote hydraulics control knob. This is the hour meter to track required maintenance. Here is the parking brake, lift to engage and push down to disengage. The parking brake should always be engaged before starting and when the machine isn't in use. There are a few items that should be checked out each day. Here on the left side of the unit is the hydraulic reservoir. To check the hydraulic fluid, clean around the reservoir cap. This will prevent any contaminants from entering the hydraulic fluid. Remove the cap. Lift out the dipstick and wipe it off with a clean rag. Reinsert and lift it out. The hydraulic oil should be between these two marks. If it's not, contact your maintenance supervisor. 
To check the engine oil, have the unit on a level surface and tilt the seat forward. The dipstick is here on the left. Remove it and wipe it off with a clean rag. Reinstall it and remove. The oil should be between these two lines. If not, have the right type of oil added here by your maintenance staff. Don't overfill. It could damage the engine. When reinstalling the dipstick, make sure that it's seated properly. If not, contamination could get into the crankcase and damage the engine. The Infield Pro and Sand Pro use unleaded regular gasoline. And make sure you have a full tank before you head out. The fuel tank is here on top of the unit. Remember, gasoline is flammable and highly explosive, so only fuel up in designated areas away from any kind of ignition source. Don't overfill and keep the fuel at least one inch below the fill neck. You know where the controls are, you've checked the fluids, and you've fueled up. But there is one more check that should be done each day, and that's the safety interlock system. The interlock system is for the safety of the operators and bystanders. So never operate a unit without all the interlocks working properly. When checking the interlock system, always make sure the parking brake is engaged. To check the neutral interlock, press down on the traction pedal and try and start the engine. It shouldn't crank. To check the seat switch interlock, start the engine, lift off the seat and press on the traction pedal the engine should kill. There is one other interlock that you might have, and that is the optional remote hydraulics. If you have this, pull or engage the remote hydraulics control knob and try and start the engine. It shouldn't crank. Then disengage the control knob. Make sure you still have the parking brake set and start the engine. Engage the control knob by pulling it up and lift out of the seat and the engine should kill. If any of these interlocks do not work, report it to your supervisor. Whether you're experienced or new to the Sand Pro or the Infield Pro, you should practice with the unit to get used to its operating characteristics. Always operate the units at full throttle. Practice going forward and turning both right and left. Always make sure the rear attachment is up before going in reverse. Having the attachment down could damage it or the traction unit. Practice going around objects, such as posts or fences, so that you can see the furthest point of the attachment, so you don't damage the attachment or object. When moving from one area to another with the Sand Pro or Infield Pro, slow down in rough or unknown terrain so that you do not put yourself in danger or damage the unit or attachments. Never operate a sand pro or infield pro on a hill or embankment that has not been approved by your supervisor. The sand pro and infield pro is a one-person machine, so do not let passengers on the unit when transporting or working with the unit. Prescription medication may impair your ability to operate machinery. Coal capsules, alcohol, and other drugs also cause drowsiness. Stay alert and stay safe.